glory. I don't know about you, but I am so glad that he didn't leave me the way he found me. Amen. I come this morning to first welcome all of you to Life Springs this morning. Thank you for joining us live. Hopefully it won't be too long when we get back in the house and, and start fellowshipping again. But till that time, thank God for live stream. And, and guys, I miss each and every one of you. Can't wait to be able to at least fist bump. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I got a, a question to ask all of you today. How you doing? Now, I mean, really, how are you doing? How, how are you doing? That, that's the question. How are you doing? You know, till here lately, that's never been a hard uh, question for Mark. You ask how I'm doing, I tell you real quick, I'm blessed and highly favored, anointed child of the most high God above and not the beneath, and I'm more than a conqueror, and everything I put my hands to shall prosper. But to be honest with you, that's a hard question for me to answer today. How are you doing? And, and see, we live in a, in a time where emotions are everywhere, all over the charts. I mean, and we're going to talk about emotions today, probably for the next few weeks. So uh, in, in the comments there, I want you to take one word that describes your current emotional state. But now watch, no cuss words. All right, now, come on now. One word that describes your emotional state right now. Put that in the comments down there. Go ahead and, and load it up in there. I mean, some people I've talked to, they said they feel numb, feel a little angry. A lot of people say they feel afraid or anxious or irritated. I, I just have to say for Mark, I'd have to say I'm unsettled. I, I'm just unsettled. You know, wh wh why, why are you asking these questions, Pastor? Well, it seems like the smallest things today is, is becoming the hardest things to do. You know, some of the smallest things, I, I mean, we come together, I don't know whether to even hug you, stay my six feet, fist bump, elbow bump, or go in for the hug. I mean, that's just kind of where we're at today, Amen. Some people with a mask, some without. We live in, a, in, in some very uncertain times. Um, we live in economic uncertainty right now. Our racial tension is running rampant. Our political division in our country, not counting now, they're going to throw a war on us. Now, on top of that, now we got... We got a hurricane coming in off the Gulf Coast. To top it all off, we're we're right now in a national pandemic. And let me tell you something: uh, the COVID is for real. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Thank you for all y'all's uh, concerns and mess. But listen, uh, it's it's real. So I want to ask the question again: How are you doing? That's what I come to ask today, how are you doing? For me, like I said, I feel like I'm a little unsettled, but to be honest with you, uh, our emotions as a country is, is all over the place. Amen? If we're not careful, we'll let our emotions get the best of us. And we got to look at our emotions. God gave us emotion, so if God gave us emotion, let's, let's dive into his word and see what his word says about our emotions. Amen? And, and matter of fact, let, let's look at the life of Jesus and, and his emotions. Uh, someone did a study on uh, uh, emotions, Jesus' emotions, and they found 39 different emotions. I didn't know there was 39 different emotions Period. Until I had a teenage daughter. Then I found all 39 of them in one, mess, in one little conversation. <laughs> oh, and everybody said, Amen. So, let's just look at a couple of things right quick that, that maybe Jesus' emotion revealed to us here in his word. Uh, remember when Jesus was looking over Jerusalem and, and all the people that had 
been re- that was rejecting God, the Bible says it grieved him so. Grieved him so. And then when the religious leaders came, uh, cared more about rules than people, he became angry. He took on righteous anger. And then there were 72 followers described how God used them. And the Bible says that he was overjoyed with emotions. And remember when his friend Lazarus died and he came to to the tomb, knowing he had the power to raise him from the dead, the Bible says that he weeps in sadness, the emotion of sadness. And before the cross, when he's at the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he was knelt down prayer, praying with the, with the emotions of discouragement, the emotions of loneliness. And he was also battling with spiritual agony. Wow. Our Savior, Jesus. He, he battled with emotions just like you and I. We all deal with emotions. Today I want to take our text out of Luke the seventh chapter, if you'll go there with me, Luke seventh chapter. Uh, we're going to talk about one of our first emotions of Jesus. See, you got to know that Jesus just got through preaching his 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 perfect message on the Sermon on the Mount, and he's come down and and we'll pick it up here in verse eleven, seven eleven. Amen. Luke chapter seven, verse eleven. It says soon. Afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, he walked over to the coffin and his heart over, excuse me. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And the bearers stopped. The young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the boy, dead boy, sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd and the praised And they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. All right. First thing here we got to notice is Jesus walked up to a funeral possession. Now, let me me tell you, it wouldn't be like a a funeral possession we'd have today. I mean, there's not going to be any hearse. There's not going to be any police stopping traffic at the crossroad and and the police out. In, in full brigade, it's not going to be like a funeral procession that we see with cars going down the road with lights blinking. No, what you're going to have is you're going to have a coffin being pulled down the road, and you're going to have, for the most part, paid mourners that were professional mourners. They would they would take their flutes and 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 their tambourines and and they would wail and they would get paid to do this. Amen. Now, there's some things we don't know about all this, amen? Uh, we don't know how old the, old, the, the widow lady was. We have no idea. We don't know how her husband died. We don't know if he died accidental death or he died from sickness or, or what he died from. We have no idea how he died. And we did not know and still don't know how old the son was. These things we don't know. But there is some things that we do know. The little boy almost certainly died the day before. Amen? And, and you say, well, how do you know that? Well, they didn't have embalming back then like we have today. So when somebody passed away, it was a quick service because they didn't have formaldehydes and embalming fluids. And so they did a quick burial fast. Amen? So now I want you to visualize this with me uh, in your mind. A single mom that already lost her husband, just lost her only son. Mm. Can you know pain? That's the deepest of pain I I believe that any human being could 
ever, ever feel in their life, in the deepest grief. And verse uh, 13 says this, and the Lord saw her. Over 40 times in the gospel, we're told Jesus saw someone. It's funny to me, everywhere you look, there's people, right? I mean, come on. But it could be like me. I can go into a crowded room and glance over and not see hardly anybody. But he saw her. Just because somebody looks doesn't mean they see you. Mm. But here is a single mom, widowed. She's in shock. Now she's lost her only son. But the Lord saw her. I need you to put that in the text this morning. But the Lord saw her. You need to get that down into your spirit today. But the Lord saw her. What, what, what did Jesus feel here? Let me tell you what he felt. He felt the same thing for her that he feels for you when you're hurting. In verse 13, he says, When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Passion. Ah, yes, yes. The root word, the root Greek word translated here for compassion is splagna. Uh, splagna. It's S P L A G N A. Splagna. I know it's kind of a crazy word, but that's the, the word for compassion. And, and pretty much what it means, and to, to, to dissect it out and bring it to its root words, it, it, it refers to. A, a compassion all the way down to your intestines, all the way down in your gut. Have you ever had that gut wrenching thing happen in your life, or, or maybe maybe you drove, you came up on an accident, and and your first thing in your mind was, "Oh Lord Jesus, I pray they're okay." Uh, and you look, and there's the paramedics out here trying to tend to two people out here on the side of the road and you oh God please in the name of Jesus and you go to praying over them and, and, and the next thing you know you happen to notice one of the cars and you get to looking and you notice you know these people and yet you you were praying for them but now all of a sudden it changes everything in your compassion changes and that's what Jesus did when he saw that woman Splaga came to his heart that that gut-wrenching compassion that he had on her. Amen? I don't think there could be any stronger word used in the Greek for that. Because it said, the, law, the Lord saw her, he noticed, and he cared. That's what it meant. That the Lord saw her, he saw her pain, he noticed her pain, and he cared. Amen. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but you need to hear me and hear me clear today. Listen, God sees you. He notices. He knows what's going on in your life right now. He knows exactly what, what's going on, and he cares, and he cares, and he cares. And everybody said, amen. Maybe you're today fighting with everything in you for your marriage, or you maybe you're trying to figure out how you're gonna pay your bills, and and, and maybe you got a, a maybe you got a, a wayward child that you've been praying for that's making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and it doesn't look good, but but you still know that you're standing and believing God for him, Amen. And or maybe you're trying to uh, believe God for your healing and your health right now. Uh, Maybe you feel anxious about some stuff or frustrated about some things. And, or maybe you even feel afraid. Can I tell you something? Jesus sees it, and he notices it, and he cares. And everybody says, amen. See, Jesus is grieving, uh, sees this grieving mom that's grieving over her child, and he hurts with her. See, when you're going through something, he hurts with you. He goes through with you. His, his, the emotions, his emotions line up and, and, and automatically compassion falls. He says, tells her then, he says, don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it. And the, bear, the bearers stopped. 
Listen, guys. Fix it. I'll break something down to you. You really need to hear me today. You need to hear me today. He touched the coffin. Well, let, me, let me explain something to you first and foremost. Their coffin wouldn't be like the coffin we have today. Uh, you know, we got six sides to ours. We got, a, we got, you know, sides, ends, tops, and bottoms, and ours is closed off. That would have been just a, like a, 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 a little pallet on wheels with a body laying on it. The body would have been exposed. So when he walked up and touched the coffin, he actually touched the boy. Amen. And it had just been, like I say, a flat piece of wood with wheels on it. And they had been pulling. Mourners would have been following. But he touched the coffin. Hmm. Can I tell you a little something? Uh, them folks, fro- they freaked out when Jesus touched that coffin. See, because the Pharisees had 613 religious laws. They were every one of them an outward appearance. None of them inward, all outward. See, you, one of them was you could not touch a dead body and, or anything that touches a dead body because it would cause you to be spiritually unclean. I don't know about you, but we serve a, a Jesus that, that crosses the line, that, that will, will cross a line in a minute. He, he's, he's a rule breaker. He walks up, and, and, and he crossed the line, and, and he touched the boy. He touched the coffin. He touched that dead thing. Mm. See, every time religion drew a line, Jesus crossed the line. Why? Because love crosses the line. Love will cross the line for you every day. Love will cross the line for me every day. I don't know about you, but amen. This distorted religion draws lines to keep people out. Mm. Could be a lot of reason why some people won't go to church. They won't have nothing to do with church because they, they, they've seen too many lines drawn to keep people out. Can I tell you something? Jesus doesn't care about religious people or their rules or their appearances. Amen? Jesus didn't care about lines. So we don't draw lines to keep people out here at LifeSpring. We do not. We cross lines to bring people in. We'll do anything short of falling, short of sin to draw those to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. But Jesus, y'all, ignored the religious policies and he touched her dead son. Mm. To me, that says that our Savior, he, he leave the 99 to come after the one. See, he saw the mother through the, through the crowd as she was weeping and mourning. And he saw her and compassion fell on him. Just one touch. I want you to put that in the one touch from the master. His lifeless dead body come to life. And everybody said, Amen. When Jesus touched the boy, you know the crowd had to gasp, shocking. <gasps> More incredibly, the boy gasped. <laughs> Jesus' touch, Jesus' touch brought him back just like it will you. No matter what dead thing you may have in your life, one touch from your master will. I don't know about you, but I need a touch from the master today. How many today would say, I need a touch from the master today? Just one touch, the Lord saw, he cared, and he touched. Somebody say, the Lord saw, he cared, and he touched. Ah. It's hard to explain to you this morning this act of compassion that he did for this single mother. See, um, here she is in a place now, she's already lost her husband. She already lost her, now she's lost her son. So she's not just a widow. Now she's burying a child. Now she's going to have no way to make a living. So 
more than likely she's going to have to beg or she's going to have to sell her body in order to live. So there was more to this, com- this, this compassion than just raising the boy from the dead. This was a blessing. When God blesses you, he blesses you beyond measure. And I'm here to tell somebody today, I don't know what you got going on. I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe you're in a place right now that you need God, Jesus, to walk over and touch your dead situation that not only gives you back what you lost, but it also gives you back your hope. Somebody say amen. I don't know about you, but some of us need our hope back. Can I tell you something? Jesus sees and he cares. All we need is one touch from Jesus. Amen. And, you know, uh, let me give you a little personal story. You know, as this pandemic started, I, I, I've never never had to deal with anything like this as a pastor. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's real hard. And the decisions that I'm making today are decisions like for us not being together in the building I'm making right now is because I, I, I want to do it hearing from God and, and, and also that I, I want to make good decisions to keep everybody safe. Some people say, well, they ain't shut down over here. I know this church ain't shut down. That church ain't shut down. This church didn't shut down. I don't have to answer for those churches. I have to answer for this one. So it makes it real difficult as a pastor. So I'm going to be honest with you. My emotions have been all over the place because the uh, last thing I want to do is shut down and not be in the building. But I also know that God says when we've done all we know to do. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's been tough. It's been, and in that, it, it's caused some unsettledness in, in, within myself. God, I need to hear from you. I need, I mean, I've had to cry out God, to God more in the last few months than I think I ever had. It's on a continuous basis of God showed me what to do, what I need to do. I don't know how to do this. This is not, this is not in my wheelhouse. I'm going to stand by faith. Some people, well, you ain't got much faith. You shut the building down. Well, can I tell you a little something? My Bible says to do all I know to do. And if you're listening today, the the anointing of Christ from this building is coming into your living room today. And today, today, you can get a touch from the master. So now I ask you a question. Jesus sees her. He cares about her. He touched him. Just one touch. Now I ask you a question again today, and I want you to put it down in your, in your comments. In one word, how do you feel today? Being honest, how do you feel today? Are you unsettled? Are you anxious? Are you depressed? Are you hopeless? Are you just overflowing with so much joy you don't know what to do with it? Can I tell you something? For those that, that right now that need to cry out to Jesus, we need to cry out to Jesus. We need to cast our cares on Him, for He cares for us. Amen? So we can get our hope back. So, we can see, so we, when, we notice, when Jesus walks by and He notices and sees, we know that He's going to touch. And He knows our pain. He can touch us with the infirmity of our pain. Amen. And the thing is, is what I loved about this story more than anything is he had compassion on a mother that was a, losing the only begotten son, had compassion on a mother that was losing her only begotten son. And his compassion for her was so strong. He, he cares more for you guys than you have ever, ever be able to imagine in your life. He is right now on the throne of heaven waiting on you, waiting on me to throw our hand out and say, touch me, Lord. Touch me. Touch me. But are you willing right now to just say, God, I'm, I, I don't know why, but I'm unsettled. I'm, I'm anxious. I, I don't know why, I'm, but my emotions are, are, are all over the place. And, and I need that peace that surpasses all understanding. If that's you today, throw your hands up in the comments today. 
is I want to pray with each one of us before we get out of here today. And I want to be able to loose that touch if you're willing to reach for that touch today. He's wanting to touch each one of us. His compassion for his people has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't think that he didn't know that we was going to be in the, in the, in the situations that we're in today? He knew him before the foundation of the earth. And can I tell you something? It didn't catch him by surprise. So right now, let, let's, let's let him work on our emotions. Man, don't miss the next couple of weeks here. We got some, some good, deep getting down into some soul searching. But you're going to have to be real with him, just like right now. That lady, you see, when Jesus walked by, she wasn't even studying Jesus. She was, she was mourning the death of her child. Can I tell you something? When we say, God, I need you. I need you. I, I need you, God. If that's you today, if that's you today, I need you to raise your hand up in the comments and say, that's me. I need him today. So wherever you're at, if you can, Unless you're driving now, stand to your feet. I want to pray with you. I want you to throw your hands up, and I want you to receive this. Again, now, if you're driving, keep your eyes on the wheel. Father, we come before you today. Just as Jesus touched that coffin, we're asking in the name and the authority of Jesus for that touch, that one single touch for each one of us right now. Father, we loose your touch over your people today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I give you all the praise and all the glory that right now, those supernaturally being touched all around the world right now through this internet, and I give you the praise and the glory. Just as you touched that boy, I ask you touch our lives, touch our emotions, Give us peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we give you the praise and we give you all the glory today. And we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Now I say receive in Jesus' name. I said receive in Jesus' name. Receive that touch from him today. And we give you all the praise, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. I love you guys so much. Can't wait to be with you in person. Uh, I'll let y'all know. We're, we're praying about it, studying about it, checking about it, trying to be about it, trying to do what God would have us to do. Amen. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday night. Me or Jonathan won. I don't know about y'all, but Jonathan kind of rocked it Wednesday night, y'all. I've already told them I don't even like them no more because they did such a good job. No, actually, they did an amazing job. Um, so y'all give it up for Pastor Jonathan and, and Matt. They, they, they did an awesome job. I got a little stuff going on at work. It's, that has nothing to do with personal issues. There's something else going on at work right at the moment. Um, so I love you. See you Wednesday night. Uh, receive that touch today. Receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night.